AEW stars don't want CM Punk back. Plus, scrapped Raw segment plans are revealed. And we've got a major update on a WrestleMania match. It's all in the wrestling news right now. You know how next month the government are doing that thing where they are sending out an alert tone to everybody's phone? Yes, I do. It's going to be on a Sunday afternoon and I can't wait. <laughs> we should have something similar for when there's CM Punk news in the headline. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's phone does that. Oh, we'd be busy phones. So more CM Punk flavoured news today. The fallout from that deleted Instagram post continues. Wade Keller speaking to PW Torch, well, from PW Torch, uh, talks about Punk's comments that he made about his time in AEW. Yes, is what Wade has to say. Well, from what I can gather, the sentiment is the majority of wrestlers don't want him back. I would go as far to say even uh, that my sources are saying the mass majority of wrestlers don't. The mass majority of wrestlers don't want him back. Nobody wants him back. Uh, one person said maybe one or two of the top third of the roster want him back in the top half. What? <laughs> What's going on here? A top third the of the top, top, top half. Uh, it's wheels within wheels. So... Three of the four EVPs, two of the four EVPs. But then it goes. But then, but then what? He, but then what he goes on to say here goes against that. Yeah. So yeah. Punk doesn't get along with Hangman. Punk doesn't get along with Moxley. Punk doesn't get along with Kenny. Punk doesn't get along with the Bucks. Uh, and Keller also alluded to tension with Punk and MJF. Uh, I, I heard stuff about that, but I think that's. I've, we've heard a lot about Punk in the last week or so. Yes, we have. Uh, Keller continues saying, Punk going off on Instagram really hurt the chances of him being welcomed back. But if it's something that Tony wants, they, they, they won't like it, but they'll have to go along with it. And that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Because obviously when you have the... It's, a bit, it's an issue a lot of people have said about AEW from the start, like having EVPs as active wrestlers. It can't work because mm. they're going to put their own sort of business, their own sort of position on the card in front of the betterment of the company because they just care about themselves. So it's going to be interesting to see if this does happen, Tony Khan wanting CM Punk back, what happens to the EVPs when they see CM Punk for the first time in a little while. It's interesting to see how this all plays out. I mean, there are still... Uh, uh, there's still quite a, a number of people who see and read these reports and go oh this is a work this is a long play by AEW to have somebody leave the company lambast the company uh, and fall out with everybody it's all part of the plan Ross yes it's it's you know playing the long game trust the process and all that there are some that do believe that you know what if this ends up being the the longest con in wrestling history I mean, I'd have to applaud. It's I'd have, have to applaud. There might be a point in time where it turns into a work, but it definitely was a shooting ton to begin mm. with. Absolutely, 100%. But they say, yeah, exactly, in the same sentiment, I think if CM Punk comes back, that doesn't necessarily mean that it was a work all along. Bruno Sammartino came back for the Hall of Fame, and I went, <laughs> ah, it was a work! It was a work all those 40 years so he spent a out of the company. So hey, you don't need to go back to PG, and then CM Punk <laughs> will come back, and everyone, everyone will be happy. That's exactly what Just it needs like to Bruno be. Just like Bruno Samaritano, as my friends would call him. <laughs> Samaritano. That's what Matthew calls him. Do oh, he does, doesn't he? Bless his face. Uh, now, John Moxley was one of those that got a name check in CM Punk's now deleted post on the gram, uh, where he cited his Rocky three idea that quote sucked and even said that Moxie refused to lose to him on the way to All Out yeah. uh, Moxie's going to address that in the next few hours he's on the sessions with Renee Paquette talking about it Yeah, um, continues to be a work though doesn't it it's all a work <laughs> AEW employee Renee Paquette AEW's mm. John Moxley on a podcast it's all mm. a work AEW people listen to podcasts it's I'll, a work can I clarify can I, I just want to admit to something as well I've never seen a Rocky film all the way through really or did you fall asleep? No, I just have never seen, I've never sat down and watched them. I watched one that was on like ITV4 once when he's punching the meat that's hanging down and he's working in the meat nice. place. That's, I've seen like maybe half of that one, but I'm with, that's the one thing I've got in common with CM Punk. You've seen Thunderlips, haven't you? You've seen the Hulk Hogan one. No. Oh, that's hilarious. No. It's great. That's It's where people went, Hulk's really good at acting. We should get him doing more acting. <laughs> and then he did Mr. Nanny and they went, no. Oh. <laughs> that is a fantastic film. Mr. Well, he's nanny. riding along on his motorbike and someone pushes a dog into the lake. Fantastic. <laughs> Poor dog. He's a nanny with hilarious I results. I don't want to go to school. <laughs> Why do I have to go to school? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, fil <laughs> filmographers, cinephiles of the internet know that Ross has never seen the Rocky films, but he has seen Mr. Nanny extensively. <laughs> yeah, the guy gets with his chrome dome gets electrocuted. It's fantastic. Anyway, we'll move on to the rest of the news. Uh, last night on Raw, Brock Lesnar and Omos had their big 
weigh in. We know that Omos weighs 410 pounds. We didn't get to learn what Brock Lesnar weighs, which was a bit of a disappointment for me. I wanted to know. Is it a Braun Strowman situation? Oh, I weigh 305 pounds. I do. I'm Brock Lesnar. Well, step on the scale. I'm with you, Brock. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I was keen to know his wingspan again. They mentioned last week <laughs> Brock Lesnar's wingspan. I thought, is he like a bold eagle? <laughs> That's how he'll beat Omos. He'll fly away. That'll be the match. Just the performance of Swan Lake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. do, 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 do. do you know what? I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't no. be mad. Uh, so we saw the 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 the, the weigh-in turn into a brawl uh, on Raw last night. Five for Select say this isn't what it was meant to be because earlier in the week WWE were looking to emulate UFC weigh-ins for the Brock and Omos segment, complete with towels. <laughs> 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 Don't make me run, I'm full of chocolate. Oh, Brock, you naughty boy. That stinged my bum bum. But apparently the towels thing are for when you don't meet weight and you need to take clobber off and you can hide your modesty. So, But the towels thing was important. So I think it was meant to be more of a, a, a showcase moment, something a bit more gimmicky than it was. In fact, in, it would just crash Holly scales and then a fight in the end. You know, I was happy with what we got, though, because seeing Brock Lesnar fly about like he was last night, he was like a, a, a child on too much coke. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the drinking form. The, 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 the wouldn't, pep, know what, the, 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 wouldn't know what you mean, Ross. Uh, blah, bollocks. Wouldn't um, know but, uh, he was what flying, you mean. He was flying around. He didn't get to pick up Omos. So that's obviously the moment we're going to build to on Saturday or Sunday, whatever night it's going to be on. Lesnar picking up Omos after he flies about for a bit and goes, <laughs> like Ryan Dunn and Jackass Just one. Swinging him round by his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Talking to <of> legs. <laughs> That's awful, that. Thank you, mate. Stacey Keebler's in the Hall of Fame. Yes. She's got legs. And she, she knows how to use them. She's got thighs. <laughs> she knows how to choose them. I don't know what the lyrics are after the first line. Do you? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> PW Insider broke the news. She chatted about it with People Magazine, saying she was very emotional about the announcement. I think we, we saw a bit about her on Raw last night as mm. well. This is nice. I like Stacey Kubler going into the Hall of Fame. Well, yeah, of, of our generation, well, we're, we're a bit of a gap bust, but, you know, we're, we're in a rough same ballpark as I stood on my way through this sentence. I think She's so. one of the last, the, the premier lasses of back in day, isn't she? I think it's nice to go, like, in the span of, what, 20 years, we've gone, fr she's gone from, um, uh, a bust of her bum at the WWE Access. <laughs> Do you remember that? That happened. We're weird lot wrestling fans. <laughs> we don't deserve nice things. <laughs> to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Via George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason, though, Tom. It was her dedication <laughs> as the Duchess of Dudleyville that got her there. Uh, do you know, we, we watch on the classic SmackDown review. We're, we're watching SmackDown from the very beginning again. We're in 2001. We've just started the Stacey Keebler Duchess of Dudleyville story arc. Mm. I thought it was a great way of revitalising the Dudleys with Stacey. They didn't like it, though, did they? They didn't like it at no. all. Right? Jeff Hardy loved it, though, didn't he? Jeff he kept was, spanking her bottom. Every, basically, Jeff and Stacey got a lot of romance angles, so of course Jeff was up for it. <laughs> uh, during her time, it, obviously, she, she started rest. She joined the wrestling world as a Nitro, as Nitro Girl Sky. Yeah. She won a Nitro Girl competition to do that. She became Mrs. Hancock, which I think you went. Oh, she had a baby with Sean Stasiak, though. Oh, no, it was a baby. With, it was going to be a baby with possibly David Flair. The speculation was that Ric Flair or Ritz Russo were going to be the dad. Hello, WCW 2000, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, but then she came out with a pram and, real, and revealed that the baby was actually her next... Charge Sean Stasiak, I think it was. Yeah, they, they cut that down on uh, on Worldwide on a Friday night on Channel 5. <laughs> I can't lie to you, Tom. <laughs> and then she joined WWF during the invasion. She managed the Dudleys, Tess Steiner, the Hurricane. And, uh, she was on Dancing with the Stars mm. for a bit. And... Uh, and she last we last saw her in one inducting Tory Wilson into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and it was nice. It's a nice journey because this was that footage from the WCW. I think it's in 1999, maybe maybe 1998, where she's in the crowd with a sign, just being a fan. Yeah, and now she's in the Hall of Fame. Look it's at the that. By her dream come true. The by her dream at WrestleMania for Stacey Keebler. Speaking of Mania, big update on a Mania match for this weekend. Yeah, Finn Balor cut his own Edge theme promo. We saw Edge's promo last week where he was a floating head with some candles. <laughs> it was fantastic. Edge, uh, sorry, Finn Balor had his shoulders this week. He wasn't just a floating head, but he just so said... So he'll have his knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> <laughs> he basically says to Edge, there's nothing more dangerous than a caged demon. And he just says some more spooky bollocks, basically. <laughs> and then the demon sort of face paint flashes on one side of his face, hinting at Tom, the demon might actually be at... Well, the demon's going to be at WrestleMania. It's going to be, yeah. <laughs> Demon Finn Balor making his first appearance since uh, that turnbuckle disaster against Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules in 2021. Love to see it. Yeah, he flopped on the floor 
swallow like a fish, didn't he? He flopped like a fish, God bless his soul. Uh, it's not only the demon that's returning at WrestleMania. PW Insider Elite revealed that the Hell in a Cell structure currently hanging above SoFi Stadium is not the red one, it's the classic black one. Or grey, if you're pernickety like me. <laughs> or colorblind like me. <laughs> Uh, I think that, that yeah, that, that I think this is great. I, I'm very happy to see the, the return of the classic Hell in a Cell structure. Oh, yeah. The the red hurt my eyes. <laughs> I know why they did it, because of toys and whatnot and the kids, but you know what? F them, kids. <laughs> it's time to make the Hell in a Cell look gnarly like it did when we were wee nippers. <laughs> F yeah. them kids. F them kids. I think on that bombshell, we say there'll be more wrestling news throughout <laughs> the day at coltarlic.com. Stay safe and F, F them, them kids. kids.